Hello, um, this video, I'm trying to answer some questions that I've received emails and a couple calls about uh, people trying to create their own dynamic uh, cabinet library based on what they see in the sketch data dynamic component cabinets. So since we're doing dynamic components, we're going to have to have the SketchUp Pro. That's what I'm running here. And uh, first thing I want to kind of show is uh, the materials. And materials are kind of made up how we defined the part. Uh, we had to kind of make the parts a little more complicated with groups so that we get the materials to do what we wanted. So I'm going to bring in the swatch of materials. And uh, I've talked about this in other videos. If we zoom in on it, it's just basically a swatch of predefined materials. And what it does is it primes and creates this whole list, which are the edge of the case cabinets, the doors, and the interior of the cabinets and things like that. And so now we can define them. So um, we can actually don't need this anymore because we'll still have these in here. And if I want to take the face of the door, I can now upload a new uh, picture. So I've downloaded some laminate colors, which simulate wood or even laminate if you're doing a laminate job. Um, so for Wilson Art, for example, we could pick this walnut which gives me a finish and a grain and uh, we could do that for all these um, face interior although you can turn material image you can turn finish interiors on and that'll give you your cabinets too but uh, let's take a look at a part to show you how well, it makes it a little more complicated than just drawing a rectangle and push pull into a panel so I'm gonna go grab a component uh, let's see. So if I grab this box, I bring the box in, and if I look at the outliner, I have this box. Then let's say if I look at this end left, which it's highlighted over there, and then I can actually see these other, and let me shrink this up and expand that. Okay, see that's a group, and these are all groups that are inside this component. And by doing groups, we can actually make a group or a component dynamic. So um, components are good if you're reusing them. The problem with components is that um, if it's used more than one time in the model, they're all the same. It doesn't always make them unique. But you can put formulas, dynamic formulas and things on groups. So this end panel left is made up of a bunch of groups that make up the faces and the edges, length 1, length 2, width 1, width 2. Uh, this is the face outside for FO and face inside. But now I can actually assign, if I go look at my component attributes, I can assign different materials to that face. And uh, so you'll see a material here. Um, it's at an error right now because uh, we probably haven't regened it. But Again, this is just a group, end, F, end L, F, I. You see over here, it's a group. I still can put position, length, X, material. And it's great because it's unique. So um, I don't have to worry about uh, changing something on that and messing up all its occurrences in the, in the rest of the model. So basically, in the sketch data library, our panel parts are made up, or a component made up of a bunch of faces. And that allows us to get material and also get the grain direction correctly because then I can turn that face and change its uh, direction so that the grain runs the correct way. It's, so the edge banding has the grain running its length, not horizontally. Same with the faces as I change the materials. So that's basically the definition of the parts. And we've got them all dragged in here into a box and made a basic case. This one actually has no back in it. I've turned it off because um, I'm going to show you it's more like a closet example. And let's see what variables we have on this. So we have this basic box. We can change the toe kick height. And so by default, it moved the toe kick up. And actually, since it regened it and changing that, it took on the new materials that we've uploaded. So now we have these, these new materials that have been brought in. And so you can see it took on the face. And uh, if I wanted to change the face interior, I could edit that one and bring in and so now you can see this particular box is 
changing whatever. So it's more of a closet example, change the material. If I hide the box again, it looks like we have the option to change. So right now those are three quarters of an inch. Let me change one more material. So I'll change the edge of the case. I'm going to use that same so it doesn't look so weird. Great, so now we've got the same grain. But uh, dynamic components, we could also program in and say we want to use 5 8 material. So now everything's recalculated and resized. 5 8 the bottoms. So just some things you can do. We go back, we can go to 1 inch, which would be very heavy. But if you were, we could also make the boxes. We can turn off the left end panel. And you can see it resized it, so that's if we were ganging some together. So I'll turn that back on again. And let's uh, create another copy over here, but we don't want to have a duplicate in panel. So I could turn the left in panel off on this one. And so now uh, I'm sharing that same in panel. And it looks like I have a problem with the toe kick I need to correct. And we'll just do that and see what it looks like. This is the friendly user's interface, but if we go here, I got my toe kick, and we'll drill up one level. So now I'm looking at box, and that's my end R, NL, bottom. These are all the formulas. So there's my toe. And uh, we look at formulas, positions, Good. I probably need to do a little more uh, changes to that. But one thing I want to show you is if you pre build your components with formulas, so like I can go into this box, let's say I want to drop an adjustable shelf, and I can drop it in, and I can drop a closet rod in here. And see how it resizes automatically to fit the box? Because the formulas, if we look at the formulas that are on there, they're already referring to box, which is, let's drill out, is this cabinet. So it's called box. So now it, when it drops in there, it automatically runs that formula for that box. So if I were to change this box, we'll go to the friendly screen, let's make it 22 inches wide. So now it's wider. Again, if I drop an adjustable, oh, we need to get inside of it. So now I'm editing that unit. If I drop an adjustable shelf in here, I'm just going to snap along the end panel. See how it resizes it for that width? Same for, let's say, a uh, fixed shelf. So you can see the adjustable shelf actually has a little bit of clearance on there where the fixed shelf um, is flush to the ends and flush the ends here. And now those things have attached to that parent and the formulas are being driven by that. If I were to go back and change the size of it, let's say down to 12, those parts all change with it. So minus my toe kick, I think there's a problem with the, the end panel being turned off. If I turn the end panel back on again, then everything adjusts and if I were to change everything down to three-quarter material. Now if I go back into this cabinet and uh, want to uh, drop a closet rod in here, again it resizes. I'm going to turn off the textures so that we can just kind of see the white and you can kind of see all these reference points and when we're defining the components those reference points help me kind of grab stuff and move it around. So I move and I can snap to that and move it up and down. Uh, but you could; those aren't very good if you go to do graphics. So you can turn those reference points off and they disappear with that layer. <laughs> kind of wanted to show how components, you can kind of make a, pre uh, a library of shelves and drawer boxes. Let's see if we have a drawer box. Um, uh, let's see, drawer box. So if I were to go into this one and I can actually drop in a drawer box and it'll resize so now it's locked onto that cabinet and it'll resize as I change this cabinet
So now it's resized and kept my spacing. We can also do, if I highlight that, we can also do interesting things. Add questions like, do you want it a half overlay? And we can see it's moved over here and gave me a half overlay. Do you want it inset? So if they were going to cap the, between those two end panels, we could do a inset on both sides. We can change the drawer height. These are just some things uh, that dynamic components can do for you. So now I've inset the frame, and so if somebody wanted to come back and cap the front of those end panels with the wood to make it uh, uh, look a lot fancier, that would give you that option. Um, so dynamic components can be a little rough, and uh, but it's a lot of Excel formulas and just uh, kind of working through it. But I think it's for companies that are doing design engineering, engineering where they want uh, what they're putting in SketchUp to match what they're building. Um, building the catalog yourself is the way to go because then you have control over the product and its design. And it's important to have designs that work so designers and engineers can go in and check measurements and check fits and things like that. Um, you certainly can't add, like we're trying to add the holes and already starting to get an issue with file size, and you can't make your hardware too fancy um, because the more and more details we get in here, the larger and larger the file gets. So we try to only put in the details that make it enough to make it a working drawing and to communicate to the customer and to whoever's using it the, the essential information. Um, thanks again for watching the video. I hope it was informative. Uh, and please check out uh, our other videos or our website at sketchdata.com. Uh, thank you.